Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Allen's home. My name is Doris Allen, and so we're giving God the glory, the honor, and the praise for his abiding presence, uh, for his um, His loving kindness toward us, his compassion which fail not, they new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. And uh, yesterday we talked a little bit, I mean, the last taping, we talked a little bit about fear. And so um, we, we settled with the thought that um, we don't have to fear we just have to uh, uh, fear man, but we need to have our um, lives sanctified unto the Lord and consecrated unto him. And so uh, this particular scripture coming out of Numbers about um, Balaam and Balak, uh, I've been meditating on that. I had went to uh, Jeremiah to, uh, but I'm thinking I'm going to stick with uh, Numbers this morning, the 22nd chapter, uh, going to the 23rd chapter. And um, thinking about uh, in this season and time, when we are having so much come up against uh, uh, our bombarding our thoughts, our minds, and we need to be confident that um, you hear it before, if um, if you have God on your side, he's more than the whole world against you. And so we need to rest in the confidence that um, we don't have to fear man, that God is able to deliver us out of the hand of man. God is able to keep us safe, um, I always think about, you know, um, when you're out there by yourself and you're wondering, you know, will I be safe, that God tells us that he is not just far off, but he's a God that's near. He's a God at hand. He's a God that's present. He's a God that's able to deliver. He's a God that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we even ask or think. And so we're going to, uh, our numbers, the, um, the uh, 22nd chapter talks about uh, uh, the enemy's determination to curse and to come up against the people. But uh, we see that God is very on his job and he's there to defend them. And so I'm just thanking God for reminding us um, that he is present. We, we can rest in him. Uh, and then we think about uh, there's so many examples of the children of, of Israel in the times past. The reason the scriptures are written, the Bible says they're written for our learning and our ammunition. So we will have something to hold on. We need ammunition. We need something to hold on to this season and time. We need something that we can concrete, that we can hold on to. And so uh, we talked about the weapons of our warfare, not calm, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So we need to be equipped. Uh, mentally, our minds, uh, we always hear about this battlefield of the mind. Uh, and so we need to have something that we can hold on to that our um, our consciousness and our spirit will be able to stand with uh, stand on that ground. And so we know we're standing on the word of God and we're, we're walking in the light of the word of God. And so um, Romans 8.31 tells us that, um, uh, um, that um, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And that's the whole chapter talking about. The, uh, what can separate us from the love of God, you know, can tribulation, whatever we may go through, what can stand against us if God be for us? But mainly we're going to focus in on um, Numbers, the 22nd chapter. I found it to be a comfort for me, uh, just seeing the, the, the determination of the enemy to curse these people and uh, the inability to defeat them because of God being for them. So let us pray. Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. We thank and praise you for your word, a lamp unto our feet, and a light unto our path. Open up our understanding. Let the word be written on the very tables of our heart. For the word declare, we shall all be taught by thee. And the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, your hallelujah will lead and guide us to all truth, and the truth shall make us free. Help us to stand on your word today. Help us to know with, our, with confidence, O God, and casting not away our confidence in you, Lord God, which has great recompense of reward. We know that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all we even ask or think, according to the power which worketh in us. Help us to be like David. Help us to be like Gideon. Help us to stand in the liberty way and you made us free, not to be entangled once again with the yoke of bondage. Guide us in this word this morning that we might receive the ammunition that we need and be equipped to stand. Hallelujah. Strong in you and in the power of your might. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So the book that we are going to be uh, considering reading this morning is coming out of Numbers. And uh, we saw here that God and Moses had been with them and they were getting ready to go uh, um, across the Jordan. And so they had uh, uh, 
come up against um, the Moabites, and they had uh, defeated them, and, and they came to the place where, in chapter 22, the uh, Balak had heard what the children of Israel had as they were marching across the land. God was leveling everything and everybody in front of them. God was giving them the victory. And this is not just in the spirit realm, but this God was physically giving them victory. He was giving them victory. He, uh, when they came upon Jericho, he gave them um, the, 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 uh, the, I think that one of the men of God was just talking about Jericho. He gave them the strategy to be able to bring the walls down. And so I, I listened to um, our um, co-pastor speak about that and it made me think, I said, Lord, you, this is right in line what you was telling me out of numbers. And so we're going to talk about numbers. And so we got to the place where Balak, now he sees that they're coming in his territory. And he, this is what he said. And he began to say, um, And the children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab on this side of Jordan by Jericho. And Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was so afraid of the people because they were many and Moab holler, and Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel and Moab said unto the elders of Midian now shall this company lick up all that around about it as an ox licks up the grass of the field and Balak the son of Zippor was king of the Moabites at that time and he sent therefore unto Balaam the son of bore to Pathos, Pathor, which is by the river of the land of the children of the people, to call him, saying, Come, behold, there is a people come out of Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against us. We see them coming. We see them coming, and there are a lot of them. And they heard the reputation that God had been with them. He says, come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse this people, for they are too many for me. Preadventure, I shall prevail that we may smite them, hallelujah, that we may drive them out of the land. For I wrought that he whom thou blessest is blessed, and whom thou curses is cursed. He is now seeking for a, a person who has the power to bless and curse. So the only people who have the power to bless and curse is really the people of God. you got the power to bless and curse. So even though we have the enemy who war works curses, but he said here you have the power to bless and curse. And so he's asking Balaam to come. And even when people do evil incantations, they have to seek God. They have to be, I won't seek God, but they have to be in and they have to use the word of God to do it. You know, like when, when the devil got ready to tempt Job, he said, where have you come from? I've come to and fro and uh, uh, seeking whom I may devour. So when people do things against you, they are trying to find a loophole in your armor or in your, uh, your life that the enemy can use to say, let me in, in there on that part. Let me, let me in there. You know, you said, God, that the soul that sinned, if you said the person who does this, then let me have access to their lives. Let me have, uh, uh, let me enter into that area. So he's saying here to, to Balaam, I want you to come and curse these people. He says, come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse these people, for they are too many for me. Preadventure, I will prevail that we may smite them and that I may drive them out of the land. For I wrought that he whom thou blessest is blessed and whom thou curses is cursed. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with a reward of divination. So they're going to try to buy protection. Hallelujah. Against the children of God. They are going to go to the man that, who has this reputation of blessing and cursing. You know, maybe think about when I was in the country, people were talking about they're going to the woods and they're going to somebody who can do different things. But he was going to send to Balaam to curse these people. And they, they left with a reward of divination in their hands. And they came to Balaam and spake unto him the words of Balak. And he said unto them, Lodge here. I will bring you a word again. So once they got to Balaam, Balaam says, spend the night. I need to talk to God. 
because if God allow me, then I can go and do what you want. So he says here, and he said, and Balaam says unto them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you word again as the Lord shall speak unto me. And the princes of Moab abode in ba with Balaam. And God came unto Balaam and said, What men are these with thee? So now God was talking to this man who had the reputation of blessing and cursing. He, was in, he, he, he had an ear to hear what God was saying. And Balaam said unto God, Balak, the son of Zippor, the king of Moab, has sent unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which covereth the face of the earth. Come now, curse, curse me them. Preadventure I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse these people, for they are blessed. That's the final word. Thou shalt not go with these people. Thou shalt not, hallelujah, uh, 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 curse them, for they are blessed. Now, God does not have mixed words. D don't go with them. These people are blessed. And Balaam rose up in the morning and unto the princes of Balak, get you unto your own land, for the Lord refuses to give me leave to go with you. And the princes of Moab rose up and they went into Balak, which sent them. And said, Balaam refuses to come with me or with us. And Balak sent yet again princes more honorable. So he said, I'm going to get this man of God on, or this man on my side who has this power on my side. He sent more honorable men. You know, a lot of times people are impressed with, as they used to say, dress for success. A lot of people are impressed with, with garments. They're impressed with images. They're impressed with how you look. Well, in fact, they used to say dress for success, you know. And a lot of times if you come in all ragged and, and stuff, they don't want to deal with you. They don't know the substance inside of you, but they're judging on the outward. So he sent more honorable men, more honorable than the ones before. And they came to Balaam and said unto him, Thus says Balak, the son of Zippor, Let nothing, I pray thee, hinder thee from coming unto me. For I will promote thee. So now he's offering him a promotion of great honor. And I will do whatever, whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Come therefore, I pray thee, pray thee and curse these people. So now the first group of people wasn't sufficient. Now we got more honorable men, more dignified, you know, more prestigious, you know. And a lot of times being men, we are more impressed with the outward you know, people come in with certain apparel on. We we feel they, they a lot bit more. Or they have credentials or whatever. We, we're impressed by that. But God is not impressed by that, okay? But apparently man is. So he tries to get Balaam to come and curse them with the more honorable men and with the a offer of promotion. And Balaam answered and said unto the servant of Balak, If Balaam would give me his house, Full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord, my God. So apparently Balaam was a servant of the Lord. He said, the Lord, my God, to do less or more. So he's seeking the man of God to curse the children of Israel who came up out of Egypt. Because now as Egypt is coming out in a multitude, God is going before them. We know the whole story. God is leading them by the pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. God is moving. Moses is among them. Hallelujah. And God is moving. It says, now, therefore, I pray you, tarry you here. Now, here's the mistake. The man of God is saying, I pray you, uh, tarry ye also here this night that I may know what the Lord will say unto me more. Now, God just gave him the word. He want God to add something to it. He said, stay the night. I'm going to see what God will give me more. You know, when you try to get more, he thought about this. The scripture said they wearied God because they, they requested God and they wearied God. And he brought leanness to their soul. That's in the scripture. So now he's going back to God for God to say something more. And when he just told him, don't go with these people. These people are blessed. And God came to Balaam by night and said unto him, If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But let the word which I shall say unto you 
thou, that shall thy do. Now, this is a strategy of God. Now, God told him don't go, but he's determined to go. So God said, okay, go. Now, you got to be wondering, now, God said, first of all, don't go. Why is God allowing you to go now? Why is God allowing you to go? Because now you keep pressing God, uh, uh, should I have this, uh, marry this man? Should I have, you already know in your spirit is no. But then you kill, go back to God again. Then he said, okay, we're going to see what happened. And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass and went with the princes of Moab. And God's anger was kindled against Balaam because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way, hallelujah, for the adversary against him. Now he was riding upon the ass, and his two servants was with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord. So God had already purposed. You know what? You you you're determined to push me. You determined to 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 get me to say something more than what I just said. Okay, we gonna sit. He said the angel over here in the path of Balaam said, "When you go, I'm putting the angel right there to cut you down." You know we can't play with God. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and the sword drew in his hand, and the ass turned aside out of the way and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass and turned her into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in the path of the vineyard, a well being on this side, and a wall, a well. Wait a minute. And the angel of the Lord stood in the path of the vineyard. A wall being on this side and a wall being on the other way. He was getting walled in. Hallelujah. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself into the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall and smote her. And he smote her again. He could determine, he on the, on the back of a jackass. And a jackass has more perception and more ability to see this is wrong. That God got an angel right there to cut us down. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow way where it was no way to turn, neither to the right hand or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam. She said, oh, no. Now, it's amazing when you are a man of God, power to bless and curse. And because you already pushed God, God told you what to do. And then you said, I'm going to God for a little bit more. God said, okay, I need to good, I need to, I need to put some correction because God is does not, He's not variable. He doesn't change. How did, what He said, that's what He means. You cannot uh make God like like a lot of times with us. So we say, well, I won't, and somebody uh, aggravate us or, or get us a little bit of sin. You say, well, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'm gonna give you what you want. Okay. But see, God said, okay, you can go. <laughs> but he got something for you when you get out there, okay? And when he when she saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee that thou hast smitten me these three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me. Now God said, the scriptures say, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. So now Balaam is unhappy telling the ass, you have mocked me. I would, there was a sword in my hand, Balaam is telling the ass. And now would I kill you? He ready to kill the ass because he is offended that the ass has mocked him. Now was, didn't he mock God? Hallelujah. He just mocked God. God says, God is not mocked. Whatsoever he said, hallelujah. What God says, God means it. And whatsoever a man so he's going to reap. God says it. God is, is being mocked every day. People say it even now, but God said that, but that's not what it means. God says, hallelujah, says what it means, and it means what it says. And the ass said unto Balaam, Am not I thine ass upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine unto this day was i ever wrought to do so unto thee and he said no he said i've never disobeyed you up until now he said no and Balaam said no you never so then the lord 
opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and the sword drawn in his hand, and bowed down his head, and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee. He went out to withstand, withstand him because he went to get more. God told him something in the first place, but he, which a lot of times we do, we feel we can tempt God or we can test God or we can, Lord have mercy on us, Jesus. He went out to withstand him because that way is perverse before me. Hallelujah. You, your ways are perverse. Your ways is crooked. You 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 have the power, but then you got to. The Bible said you got to examine ourselves whether or not we are in the way. When our way gets twisted, or our way gets, uh, we keep we trying to twist things to make them suit us. We are in danger of the word of God or the angel of the Lord coming against us. And the angel and the ass saw me and turned from the these three times, unless. She had turned from me. Surely now also I had slain thee. I would have I would have killed you. If it wasn't for this ass, I would have killed you. She turned. She turned. The ass, the jackass turned, but you was adamant about going in the way the wrong way. Praise God. But here, we get into the thing here where we're gonna go down a little bit further. But anyway, you at the end of that. Balaam determined, God began to say unto the angel of the Lord said unto Balaam, Go with the men, but only the word that I shall speak unto thee, that shall thou speak. So Balaam went with the princes of Balak, and when Balaam heard that Balak was come, he went out to meet him with, the, with a city, unto a city in Moab, which is in the border of Anon, which is in the uttermost coast. And Balak said unto Balaam, did I not earnestly send unto thee to call thee? Wherefore camest thou not unto me? Am I not able indeed to promote thee to honor? So he says, how come you didn't listen to me? I sent my first man to you. I sent my second man to you. Why didn't you come the first time? I'm able to give you some, I'm able to give you honor. And I think about the disciples when they kept saying, don't preach anymore in the name of Jesus. Don't do this anymore. He says, shoot, is it better for us to obey God? Oh, man. So it's so better to obey the voice of God. Okay? But Balaam was entreated to go. And Balaam said unto Balak, Lo, I am come unto thee. Have I now any power at all to say anything? The word that God put in my mouth, that shall I speak. And Balaam went up with Balak, and they came to Kerjeth Hazar. And Balaam offered oxen and sheep and Baal, to Balaam, and to they, and they begin to offer up various things. So Balak was still not understanding who God was. So he takes the prophet Balaam up to the high places. This is in verse, uh, and it came to pass on the morrow that Balak took Balaam and brought him into the high places of Baal, that thence he might see the uttermost part of the people. It made me think about when Jesus was taken by the devil up into the pentacle. And he showed him the kingdoms of the world. So now Balak is taking Balaam, the prophet, a man of God, up into high places. And the men of God today have to be careful that the enemy is not moving you into high places so that you can speak against the word of God or you can speak against the things of God or speak against the things that God is doing in this season and time. This is a time when the enemy wants to get the people of God or the, or the servants of God on his side because he knows he cannot do anything unless God give permission. But if he can get the men of God, so Balak is trying to get Balaam up into the high place to see Israel, I'll say the uttermost part of the people. And from that place, I want you to curse him. So when men of God or people of God get into high places, you got to be careful that the enemy is not letting you get up there so that you can agree with him, that you can be in agreement with him against the things that God is doing. So it goes on to say, we're going to skip down. This is chapter 23 now. Um, and Balaam said unto Balak, build me an altar, because they're building the altar, offering up these rams and stuff on the altar. But it goes on to say down to verse 7, and he took up this parable. 
It says, we're going to do five. And the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Return unto Balak, and thus shall thou speak. And he, to return in, unto him, and lo, he stood by the burnt sacrifice, and he and all the princes of Moab. And he took up this parable and said unto Balak, the king of Moab, has brought me from Aram out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come curse Jacob, and come and defy Israel. How shall I curse whom God has not cursed? Or how shall I defy whom God has not defied? For from the top of the rocks I see him. From the hills I behold him. Lo, the people shall dwell alone and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob and the number of the fourth, fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous and let my last end be like Jacob. He said, I see these people, they're like dust, and nobody can curse them. And that was meant when God is for us, even in the enemy have taken people up into the high places as he tried to do with Jesus. Jesus defeated him in the high places. Jesus was up there already. He showed him the kingdom, showed Jesus the kingdom of the world, and he told him, no, thou shalt worship the Lord God, thy God, and him so only shall you serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who can count the dust of Jacob and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous, and let my last end be as his. And Balak said unto him, What hast thou done unto me? I took thee to curse my enemies, and behold, thou hast blessed them altogether. Now here you are blessing them. And he answered and said, Must I not take heed to speak that which the Lord has put in my mouth? Balaam learned a lesson. I almost got cut down in that straight and narrow way. When the ass was the only thing that saved me, must, I mean, at this point in time, holler, must I not take heed to speak which the Lord has put in my mouth? That's what we all got to do. Must we not take heed to speak what God has said? Hallelujah. It goes on to say, down, we're going to go down to verse 19. And God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should to repent. Has he said and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless and he has blessed and I cannot reverse it. He horrible, he has not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither has he seen Perverses in error. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. Hallelujah. God brought them out of Egypt. He hallelujah. He has, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Surely there is no incan enchantment against Jacob, neither there is any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said that Jacob and Israel, what has God wrought? God is working a work in the life of his people. We don't have to fear. If God be for you, hallelujah, if God be for you, I told you before, you don't have to fear man. What you have to fear if you have in sin, because that's what Balaam found out. When his words were perverse, God sent the angel there to cut him down. So our thought today is, if God be for you, he's more than the whole world against you. Even when the enemy is got, especially the men of God, when you get up in them high places and offering promotions, offering some prestige, or whatever they offer you, just remember, hallelujah, it is God that blesses. And when God blesses, can't no man curse. And if God curse you, can't nobody bless you. So we need to stay true to God. Hallelujah. It said, must I not take heed to speak what sh that which the Lord has put in my mouth? That is the word for the servants of God. Speak what God, I don't care how, how they take it to the queen, to the king, to the presidents, to the whoever they are. Whoever they are, whatever they offer you, tell them no. Tell them no. I got to say what does says the Lord because in the end, it is God that will be standing and we want to be standing on the Lord's side. Hallelujah. Aren't we encouraged today? I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged to know, regardless of what we face, regardless of who we go, regardless of what they offer you. Hallelujah. Say no. 
Because it's better to be on the Lord's side than to have the Lord against you, okay? Because if God is against you, then nobody can save you. But if God be for you, nobody can defeat you. Stay on the Lord's side. And this is encouraging me to me. When I read this here, I was encouraged to be uh, confident, regardless of what I stand up against. Whatever the enemy, he took Balaam up into the mountains. He took him in, and he even, he didn't stop there. If you read on, he went on to try to take him to another position. Look at him from another position and cursed him. But Balaam went on and told him, no, whom God has blessed, can no man curse. So the Lord is on your side. Rejoice. Hallelujah. He will dispatch them angels, the ministering angels, and deliver us. Hallelujah. So I believe it. You believe it too. Walk in victory, knowing that God loves you and God has you covered. In Jesus' name, amen.